The sword of valor glows as if in greeting. The glow is so bright it's not immediately clear. There is another source of light present. The shimmering golden wings of a magnificent angel. Valiant champion of Golorian, allow me to greet you. My name is the Hand of the Inheritor, and I am the Herald of Iomade, the Lightbringer. The face of the angel is hidden by Helm, but his eyes are clearly looking at you. When he spe begins to speak, there is an undercurrent of excitement in his resounding proud voice. The angel then drops to one knee before you, his grace belying his monumental stature. I am um, declined to... I mean, I want to choose good, but we need lawful. So, thank you. You do me a great honor, Harold. I am only giving you the credit you deserve, valiant champion. We have much to discuss, champion. You must have many questions for me, and I for you. First of all, I wish to say that I have come here to do what I can to help you. But also because I too need your help. But what I need most of all is an answer to a question that has been troubling me. If you are here, does that mean I truly am Yomide's chosen? What does your heart tell you? I believe I am the chosen one and will do everything I can to defend Golarion. Conviction like that is what is needed to set hearts ablaze in righteous fury! I'm glad to see it in you. I hope my answer won't cause you to waver in your certitude. Listen, I cannot answer yes or no to your question, for it would not be an honest answer. Do not wait for me to say, here is the power bestowed upon you from on high, and this is the task you must complete. That will not happen. For my lady Iomade, righteous queen of heaven, may mark a mortal with her blessing, but she would never seek to impose her will. Sometimes even I am not privy to her plans. I have come to you not at her command, but of my own accord. But I would recognize the light in heaven in any soul, and I see it in you. I can only guess how and why it was lit. Perhaps finding the answer to this question is a trial you must undergo. I have so many questions for you. Will you tell me about Yomide and heaven? Most certainly, with great pleasure. But first, let's discuss the issues of the day. I'm sure we'll have time to talk after that. Of course, what did you want to ask me? I sense astonishing power in you, akin to my own. But not just that. Many of Heaven's warriors fought the monsters of the World Wound, and among them there was one I especially cherished. My young comrade and friend, Lauriel. He and his sister Targona crafted holy weapons, and exchanged them as a sign of loyalty and camaraderie. Lauriel and Targona both disappeared in those dark years when we lost Dresden and the Sword of Valor. Even I failed to find any trace of my friends. But you carry an echo inside you. The memory of Lauriel's sword. How did this come to be? When you say I carry an echo of Lauriel's sword, do you mean this? Yes. I recognize this power as mortals recognize the voice of a dear friend. It's so sad to know I will never again see the one to whom this sword once belonged. But to see its light still shining in worthy hands gives me hope. The angel makes an gesture as though wanting to touch the light, but stops himself at the last moment. His voice is soft and sad. I received the sword in the caves beneath Canavres. I had a vision in which Lariel was betrayed. He died protecting his mortal companion. Yes, that sounds like him. He loved mortals, and understood them better than many of us celestial warriors did. Or at least, he thought he understood them. But you say the vision visited you in the caves beneath Canabras? I see now. The suffering of the First Crusaders, whose children were maimed by the demon's strange villainy, was a matter very close to Lariel's heart. For most of us, our only concern was defeating the demons. 
But Lariel wanted to protect mortals above all else. I think he went into those caves in search of the people who came to be known as mongrels. But demons often use our virtues to hurt and torment. They turned a rescue mission into a deadly trap. They will pay for this sin and others. Forgive me for my outburst, and thank you for your story. At least now I know what fate my dear friend suffered. Do you know who killed Lariel? The creature resembled Descari and possessed immense power. Many demons in the Abyss mimic the appearance of their repellent master, but I do not think it was a Arachne or a similar beast. I find myself reluctant even to utter this name under the skies of Golarion, but... There is a monster who takes special pleasure in killing warriors of heaven. It's called the Echo of Descari, for it truly is an echo. Not a demon born of the Abyss, but an artificial creation of the Lord himself wrought by him and several of his mortal followers. I sense his fetid mark in this tale. The Echo likes to strike by stealth, weaving an intricate web of lies and treason, and he despises everything connected to Heaven and Iomade. I am not in the least surprised that he hunted Lariel down. Do you know anything about the people who accompanied Lariel to the caves? Most of them were traitors, but one girl stood against them, and she perished. Alas, I do not know the names of traitors or the heroine. Lariel died shortly before the World Wound opened its mouth for a second time, devouring new lands. Many Crusaders disappeared in those dark days of chaos. The lists of the dead and missing were long. I assume the names of Lariel's companions were lost along with them. Perhaps those traitors are honored as fallen heroes today. I have many more questions about this dialogue option that it, it won't give me any, so... Hmm. I do. This story is not over, and I humbly ask for your help. What help would the Herald of Goddess need from me? I will ask for help not for myself, but for the righteous souls who may be in danger. Listen. I am going to reveal a secret to you that no Crusader has known before, except for the righteous Queen Galfrey. The demons believe their control over the World Wound is absolute, especially at its heart, the corrupted lands near the Threshold Fortress. But this is not true. There, in that web of evil, lies an enclave of the forces of good, the last shrine of ill-fated Sarkoris. That place is called Pelura's Fall. The Shimmering Maiden is an Imperial Lord, our comrade and friend. She was able to conceal her temple from the eyes of the demons and keep it hidden all these years from the opening of the World Wound until this very day. The waterfalls that gave name to the temple have run dry, but not the bravery of those who stood guard when their nation fell. The servants of Pelura have an important mission. They explore the World Wound from the inside, looking for ways to close it once and for all and restore the lands of Sarkoris. They have risked their lives, forsaking all joys and rewards in pursuit of this goal, and they have been busy with their research for a hundred years. Secrecy is their only protection. If that is lost, all the forces of the Crusader army will not be enough to protect the temple. I would not reveal this secret to anyone else, but the light of heaven is so bright in you that I cannot help but trust it. Moreover, I would like you to visit Pelura's Fall with me. There are two reasons for this. First, I am worried about the fate of our valiant allies, and I want you to meet them, champion. Second, I would like you to show them the light of Lariel's sword. As I mentioned, this sword was created by his sister Targona, she went missing at the same time as her celestial brother. We found no evidence of her death nor any other trace of her. But by touching the sword she made, the seers of Pelura might shed some light upon her fate. Please, help me in this task. My heart yearns to find my lost comrades, or to punish those responsible for their deaths. Please tell me about Pelura. She is an Imperial Lord, a powerful angel, one of our most important allies. 
and my loyal friend. She is the Mistress of the Stars and the Mysterious Light of the Aurora. Sarkurus was the land where Pelura was revealed with particular fervor, where her most important temples were located. When the demons came to this poor land, the priests and devotees of Pelura accepted the challenge bravely. Many died protecting and healing their friends in the first years of the Calamity. This saddened the Shimmering Maiden. Pelura boldly decided to intervene in the affairs of mortals, and used powerful spells to hide her main temple. Even the strongest of demons cannot find it. Please tell me about the temple and the people who live there. Pelura's fall was once a great Sarkorian shrine. From the city of Iz and other lands, the burial barges of great chiefs would go there to set off on their last journey into the mighty streams of the falls. But the temple was famous not only as a final resting place. Pelura is the patron of stargazers. Her servants possess celestial wisdom. In reading the stars, they discover the mysteries and secrets of the world. In times of old, people would seek their counsel on many different matters, and they were respected and honored throughout Sarkoris. Today, Pelura's fall is not what it once was. A hundred years of isolation has placed an unbearable burden on the shoulders of the Stargazers and their guards. But they persevere, despite the hardships. You should meet these people, for you could not hope to find a better example of self-denial and resilience. Something that I just noticed, if you compare his halo and our halo... I mean, we have become an angel, yes, and he's, I guess, some sort of archangel? But his halo is pure and ours is almost tainted with this bluish aura, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe this means that we have chaos inside us? Huh. Uh, please tell me more about Targona and Lariel. Heaven's grief at their loss could not be any greater. Lariel and Targona were daring and merciful in equal measure, and relentless in fighting evil. They called each other brother and sister because one soul was used to create them. Yes, it happens. Sometimes an angel is made of many souls, or the essence of the upper planes. And sometimes, one soul can give life to several supernatural creatures. This was the case with Targona and Lariel. When the world wound opened, they were the first to go to the mortal's aid. Alas, Heaven was in extreme upheaval after Great Arodin died. When the evil mind of Arilu Vorlesh, paired with the will of Cursed Discari, shook the foundations of the world, while the other angels and Imperial Lords were slowly waking up to the disaster that was unfolding by holding councils and getting bogged down in speculation, Targona and Lariel were already fighting demons, leading refugees out of the fallen Sarkoris and trying to find out what had happened on Golarion and how to deal with it. For what had happened was so monstrous, so extraordinary, that even Heaven did not know what to expect next. When Mendev answered the challenge of the Abyss and became the Kingdom of Crusaders, Targona and Lariel shared the hardships and glories of the First Crusade with their mortal comrades. And then they both disappeared. First Lariel, and then his sister immediately after. I was unable to search for them the moment I found out, for the World Wound had just reopened and Dresden had fallen. It was a tremendous blow for everyone. By the time I was able to begin the search, the tide of chaos had swept away all traces of them. Only your arrival has shed some light on the sad fate of L'Oreal. Mighty Angel. Again, this dialogue option is not giving me any answers or questions, but I found out that you imprisoned angels in the Wardstones, and I chose to keep them there. Can you comment on that? <laughs> There's so much that's missing here. Yeah, let's go to Pelura's Fall right now. I will be glad to accompany you. Gather your companions and let us depart. And the dwarf is useless. 
gets killed very easily. Leandra, the woman's face seems to glow with a radiant light. She looks at you with quite quiet dignity and her eyes shine with warmth and wisdom. Greeting, Herald of Yomide, the Lightbringer, and to your companion as well. I am Eliandra, High Priestess of Polura. I am happy to see a new face in my temple, the first I have seen in all the years of our vigil. The man next to Eliandra does not look like a priest. He has military bearing and his face is covered with scars. He studies you for a moment, then looks you straight in the eye. Kater, leader of the Holy Guard of Polura's Fall. I see you have revealed our existence, Hand of the Inheritor. Did we not agree to keep it a secret, even from the Crusaders? What has changed? My- oh, he's not voiced. Oh, his voice is beautiful. My righteous allies, this is no ordinary Crusader, but our champion. He brings us hope. He was chosen to receive the gift of the gods, and has twice dealt a serious defeat to our enemies. First in Kenavris, where he thwarted Descari's devious plot. Then in Dresden, where he saved the city and returned the Sword of Valor. I ask that you receive him as a most welcome guest and a brother in arms, for we stand together against the halls of the Abyss. I am Morgrain, Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. I am honored to meet the servants of Polura and the defenders of Sakoras. Eleandora lays a hand on her heart. It is an honor for us as well. Tell me about your mission. Why did you decide to remain here in the World Wound? This temple has been blessed by Polura. Whether it is day or night, the stars are always visible within the heart of the sanctuary. It is why those who study the star conduct their observations here. Moreover, if we ever hope to understand the world wound, the only place to study it is within its very borders. If we leave Polura's fall, all the work we have done over the past hundred years will be lost. You may be wondering why this work is so important. The answer is simple. We are looking for a way to heal the world wound once and for all. Through our many years of study, we have discovered that the world wound cannot be closed like an ordinary portal or a planar gate because it is too much like a living creature, always growing and changing. The world wound does not simply exist on its own, there is something else that sustains it, and until we understand what that is, our efforts to close it will never succeed. However, we have achieved much over the years, we have disproved numerous theories and trialed various research methods. Tracking oscillating energy levels across the world wound led us to an important discovery. The world wound has a heart of sorts, the place where the wound was first opened, the Threshold Fortress. We've also found a way to weaken the heart, along with the demons that inhabit it. We will imbue a mighty artifact with both the power given to us by Polura and the memory of the priests of Sarkoris. It will weaken the connection between the Threshold Fortress and the Abyss. This artifact will clear the sky above the fortress and set the sacred northern stars ablaze. If it doesn't heal the wound, it will give strength to those attacking in monstrous, its monstrous heart. I have all the resources of the Crusade at my disposal. I'm sure we can assist you in your work. I do not think that's possible. This is our life's work. It requires endless devotion and can only be completed by followers of Polura in her sacred temple. No one can aid us in this task. However, Eliandra hesitates. There is other work we were forced to abandon because we lacked the strength, time and resources. We previously explored the possibility of opening new world wounds or improving the existing ones. Did you know the wound has already undergone a growth spurt of sorts? It's not entirely clear what happened, but the wound suddenly began to expand at rapid pace and the energies of the abyss poured out of it. We tried to discover what triggered this event so that we could prevent it from happening again. Research on that subject ended several decades ago, but we can give you everything we managed to discover. However, you should be careful. This is dangerous knowledge and it must not fall into the wrong hands. What is this situation in Polura's fall? Things are no better or worse than they have been over the past hundred years. 
The temple is safely hidden from the prying eyes of demons. They simply cannot see it. However, only the most experienced fighters leave the boundaries of the temple, and they do so secretly. For the heart of the world wound lies beyond its walls. Demons and foul corruption. Even the corpses of our own dead have turned against us. Records of Pulura stargazers. You say you've been living here for a hundred years, but you don't look that old. That is a rather uncomfortable subject for us, but by the will of Lady Pulura, all the inhabitants of the temple live longer than the normal lifespan allotted to mortals. We have no need of the Sun Orchid Elixir, as our queen does. The power of the stars sustains us. We will face Forasma's judgment only when we fulfill our mission or the temple falls. The hand of the inheritor and I have a matter to discuss with you. My righteous allies, allow me to tell you about the matter that has brought us here. He knew Chagona and Lariel, the angels who defended Sarkoris in its final dark days. Morgraine helped me to discover the fate of Lariel, and it was, alas, sorrowful. But I have not lost hope of finding Targona, and I believe you can help me. Morgraine has a special gift, the imprint of Lariel's sword. This sword was made by Targona. I know it is within your power to look for the creator of this blade, if Morgraine reveals its power to you. Eliander and Cathair exchanged glances. Of course, we would not deny help to our allies. My Lady Pulura would also be glad to see Targona return, should we manage to find her alive. But this crying ritual requires preparation. I will give the necessary orders, and you will have to wait until everything is ready, and stars favor our efforts. We will help, but it would be best if you leave Pulura's fall after the ritual. Forgive my bluntness, Hand of the Inheritor. But you and the Knight Commander are notable figures. The demons are surely trying to track you, and if they follow you to our temple, our work may come to a tragic end. Eliandra's eyes drift over to one of the guards, and she's silent for some time. Then she says softly, I would like you to be our guest for a while, Knight Commander, while you wait for the ritual. See the way we live and talk to our people. Maybe news of the Crusades' revival will bring some cheer to our little community. I would ask you to pay special attention to the Temple Guards, as well as to the Stargazers, Odin, Regnard, and Teriel. Dark clouds veil their souls, but it is not within my power to help them. You should honor her request, Champion. Leandra is one of the most radiant souls I know, and Cathair is one of the most loyal and devoted. They have spent a hundred years together, with their comrades in voluntary isolation. It would be easy to lose one's clarity of perspective. I do not know mortals well enough to sense whether doubt or despair lives in the hearts of those who dwell in the fall, but perhaps you can. My goodness. And the angel's gone, as is this episode. <laughs> Until next time.